please welcome member of the Brazilian Chamber of Deputies, Eduardo Bolsonaro, founder of Movimiento Viva Mexico, Eduardo Varastegui, and your moderator, co-host of CPAC Now, Mercedes Schlapp. exciting. How's it going so far? Are you all ready for the big speakers today? Well, I got to tell you, I am so honored to host this panel uh, with two of my favorite people. Uh, they're both Eduardos, okay? And let me, tell, let me tell you a secret. <laughs> They'll be presidents one day, and I predict that here. So let's get right to it. <laughs> <laughs> We've also had the great honor of hosting CPAC in Brazil. You all have to understand, it's about saving America, but it's also about saving this, this, this world where so many countries, where CPAC is having an impactful reach internationally to stop the globalists and the communists. And Eduardo Bolsonaro, along with his father and his family, they've taken this, taken this leadership role in Brazil. So what, in your case, and answer the same question, what is happening in the region, especially as why should us Americans care about what's happening in places like Brazil? First, because Brazil is very important when you talk about geopolitics. Why don't you give you one example? And you are, for sure, you are intelligent and smart. You understand me. In case of a war, what would you like to have in your country? Iron to produce the war machines? Okay, Brazil is the number two in the world. We produce 10 more times iron than the United States. Energy, we have more oil than Venezuela, than Kuwait, than Iran. Food, we are on number four in the world when we talk about food, produ food producing. But somehow the United States is not, I mean, this administration is not uh, looking that much for Brazil. I think they are happy with the new president, you know, Lula da Silva, who had a great meeting with Mr. Biden. Ooh. <laughs> but, I don't know if you know, but this week in Rio de Janeiro, we received a warship from Iran, which is under sanctions here in the United States. Yep. And your administration here asked Brazil to do not receive that ship. Uruguay and Chile refused to receive that ship, but we got that in Brazil. So I don't, I don't know how the foreign affairs policy of the Biden administration is working with that, and I cannot understand how a big supplier of iron, food, and energy is going to the iron or China's hand. So it's very hard for me to understand that. And to the last, when you talk about culture, we have a very similar culture here with the United States. The first embassy that we opened in the world in 1905, United States. One of the first countries to recognize our independence in Brazil, United States. The first destination of our emperor last century, United States. So we are very well connected. So what I ask for you here in the United States, going to the end, Mercy, and thank you very much for this opportunity, is cover what is happening in Brazil. Not only because we are friends, you are helping us, because we are very important for you, and we have to be allies, just like we had in the Second World War, when we fought together in Europe and Africa. So let, let's put, let's, let me ask you this question. How dangerous is Lula da Silva? Lula da Silva, he's uh, one of the most dangerous communist or whatever, socialist, whatever you call, Bolivarianist Both. in the world. <laughs> yeah. They are very well connected with Lopez Obrador. They have uh, the Foro de São Paulo group, which now they change it for Grupo de Puebla, but it's the same thing. So they change experience. They have strategies to get in the power. That's why it's not a coincidence what happened in Brazil, happened in Mexico, happened in some other places. And mainly first happened here in the United States. All the issues that you look here happening here in this stage, for example, gender ideology, you know, change the sex of the, child, the children, and all of that, first, mercy, born here in the United States. Then they copy and bring it to Brazil, to Mexico, to Chile, and all of other places. Yeah. And to finish, the first thing that Lula da Silva made when he took office, it was about gun control. <laughs> First speech of Lula da Silva as president, he was canceling 
everything that Jair Bolsonaro made during the four years when he was president of Brazil. And during these four years, we saw the biggest drop ever in, in murder rates in the whole history of Brazil. Just, just while Jair Bolsonaro was giving more access for people to buy the guns in the stores, not in the black market. Right. So more legal guns, less murders. Yeah. Now, as Eduardo brought up the Supreme Court in Mexico, you all have your issues with a corrupt, very powerful Supreme Court in Brazil. Explain what's happening there. After the elections, what we had is a lot of questions about the integrity of our elections, just like here. But the answer is, it was censorship and send some people even to the prison. Nowadays in Brazil, we have from 700 to 800 people in jail. Old ladies, people that were crossing Brasilia at that night when we had problems, just like as you had here on January 6th. But we never saw in the history of Brazil this amount of people going to jail. So again, what we ask for our American friends is to cover what happened in Brazil, because sometimes not even me, I'm a congressman in Brazil. By our constitution, you have an article saying that I can say and speak about everything. My opinions, my votes in Congress, we have immunity for that. But after the elections, about 10 congressmen got the social media shut it down. Imagine here a senator that you like. I don't know, Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio. And then after the election, they start to make questions about the elections. And then the Supreme Court say, okay, shut down the social media of the senator. This is happening in Brazil now. That's why it's so important, CPAC and some independent media, to cover what is happening in Brazil. Because sometimes not even me can come and talk about that because I will have some punishments in Brazil. For sure, not fair punishments, but they do that. To finish... And give you one more example. You have two journalists that are living here in the United States that they got their passports canceled by the Supreme Court. Can you imagine that? It's like you have no nationality. From the night to the other day, then you have no more passport and you cannot go everywhere you want. They are here in the United States because you are one of our last hope in the world. When you talk about free speech, when you talk about freedom and all of that. So that's why we need to be connected and changing experiences, yeah. exposing what they do in Brazil, what they do in the U.S., because today is in Brazil, tomorrow is in Mexico, and then in the United States. And this is not only happening in Latin America. I was just with our Spanish counterpart uh, for, from Spain, the Italians. They're going through the same type of indoctrination of mm -hmm. children, gender ideology, censorship of conservative, government colluding with big tech. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>